back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Jessie and today I'm going to be doing a quick video for you guys, kind of relating to one of my already posted videos, all about writing to an inmate or a prisoner. So I posted a video about a year ago now, all about my experience writing to inmates, prisoners. Um, I'll link that video down below just in case you guys want to check it out. But basically, I talked about my experience writing to prisoners. I chose a bunch of people in the beginning and how some of these didn't respond, some of them did, but they didn't quite go anywhere. And then how one person did continue talking to me and this was almost seven years ago now. So I am happy to say I'm still in very frequent contact with this person. His name is Michael. I did go into a lot more detail in the other video. But basically, we are good friends, we talk on the phone, we email, we send birthday cards, Christmas cards, whatever you can think of that you would do with a normal friend. We pretty much do it, except the actual hanging out in person thing. So um, it's very normal in my life now. But basically, this video has been gaining a lot of interest lately. And um, while I'm very happy at that, I just want to make sure that people are being safe. Um, I've actually received quite a lot of messages on like Snapchat and Instagram of people asking kind of for tips. Um, people have been asking how to kind of choose the right prisoner to write to in the first place, what to put in that first letter, reaching out to them. And recently I've had quite a few people ask me for safety tips, which I figured this is probably the biggest thing because it is a very real you know, chance that something could go wrong. I mean, I don't want to scare people. It's never happened to me personally, but I have heard the horror stories. So I would like to just kind of safely, but you know, cautiously warn you guys and give you a few tips on how to be safe if you are choosing to write to a prisoner. So let's get started. So one of the most frequent things that people have been asking me is how to protect their privacy regarding their address. So my first tip would be if you can afford it, which I understand not many people can. Um, when I first started writing to prisoners, I definitely wouldn't have been able to afford this. But if you can afford it, I recommend that you guys get a PO box address. This way, when you send mail to a prisoner and they respond, they are responding to that PO box address and not your personal home address. So obviously this would completely eliminate the worry of them knowing where you live. The only downside is that it could be expensive. I don't exactly know how much it costs. I'm sure it depends on like the city and the country, but this would definitely reduce some of that worry about the prisoner knowing where you live. Um, another tip, if you do use a PO box, I would say do not use your full name. Maybe, you know, use your first name abbreviated as a nickname or maybe just use your last name with the first letter as opposed to writing out the full surname if you can. Um, this goes for whether you use a PO box or they do write to your home address, especially if they write to your home address, I would just say, you know, maybe don't use your full name or something like that, just to kind of deter them knowing the whole picture. Another way to avoid this whole address thing is if you are in America, you are able to use this website called JPay. And JPay is basically a platform that allows you to email the prisoners directly. So most people are able to send emails and receive them, but it does depend on the specific prison that your pen pal is in. Some of them are only able to receive emails via JPay, and then some of them are able to type them back and send them. Prisoners don't have access to the internet like full time, but from what I've heard, and Michael, for example, they have their own personal tablet. So they can write emails on their tablet and then they go to this kiosk, you know, log in for a set amount of time and then they can upload the emails to send out to people. And then they can also download the emails that they have received from people. So this is like a virtual way of communicating and it is a lot safer than giving out your address. It's cheaper than getting a PO box. So if you're able to, then definitely utilize this JPay website. Um, the only downside is that, like I said, not every prisoner has access to JPay. So when you choose who you are going to write to, um, there's a website called writeaprisoner.com. I will link it down below so that you guys can check it out. Basically, you can search for people by gender, state, crime, age, religion, anything like that. Um, you can also look at people's profiles and determine whether or not they accept communication via JPay. So if you are in America and you don't want to pay for the PO box address, then I recommend using JPay. And like I said, when you're searching for prisoners to write to, specifically make sure that they have that JPay communication 
access on their profile just so that you know that they can receive and send emails um, and if you can find someone like that then it obviously it eliminates the whole address fiasco so you know you're it's it's like emailing a friend basically you know they're not gonna know your home address because all they know is your virtual address this is obviously a very safe way to communicate with prisoners it's just that the only downside is that not every prisoner has access to it i think the vast majority of people in america do but obviously it definitely doesn't apply to everyone because it depends on the funding the state the regulations um i'm sure it depends on what they're in for you know people have different levels of security and obviously if they are at max security maybe they don't qualify for you know these kind of privileges you know that's technically what they call them you know if they haven't earned the privilege of hang having a tablet and being able to email people then they're not going to have access to it so if you do decide to use jpay you do actually have to pay to use it um you buy stamps for the letters now obviously they're not real stamps because it's an email but it's just their way of making a bit of money to kind of keep the website going it is pretty cheap um i think it works out to like five cents or ten cents per letter and it goes by how much you write so i think it's like one stamp per page the pages are pretty big it's not like you know unless you're writing a novel you're not going to be broke over this um and you can also attach images you know if you wanted to send photos to them um documents or if you wanted to send like a birthday card electronically or uh thinking of you get well soon card etc so you are able to do all of this virtually which is obviously like i said the safest way um to do this and i would probably say the cheapest way as well the best way i found to buy the stamps is if i buy in bulk so you might be tempted to maybe just buy you know three or four stamps in the beginning or the smallest package available because it's only a few dollars but if you are sure that you're actually going to continue writing to prisoners and this is really something you want to invest in then i would just recommend buying a bigger package because you know like anything in life if you buy in bulk you usually end up getting things for cheaper so i'll usually spend like 30 or 40 dollars at a time for stamps and i'll get quite a lot of them and i'll end up basically getting a bunch for free because of how many i'm buying so just something else regarding the addresses if at any time you are uncomfortable writing to a prisoner or maybe someone else has reached out you know sometimes prisoners might sell your address so that other people can write to you or you know maybe an inmate steals your address from their personal belongings and you know whatever it is whether it's someone writing to you that you don't want to receive communication from or whether the person that you chose to write to you just decide that you no longer want to communicate with them you are able to at any time contact the prison or use jpay to remove yourself from the list which basically prevents the prisoner from contacting you hopefully things don't get to that but obviously it's a very real possibility you know we don't know exactly what these people's intentions are you know obviously there are still bad people out there and people that want to take advantage of you know people on the outside who want to communicate so just another thing to kind of be aware of if anything ever did turn into a bad situation you do have that option to kind of protect yourself and take steps to prevent it from getting worse let's say this can also happen with photographs um one of the most common things that people have been asking me recently is about photographs um a lot of prisoners will ask for a photo of you when you start reaching out to them um most often this is very innocent you know think about how you would feel if someone is trying to get to know you but you have no idea what they look like obviously if you're able to picture them and you have a photograph it's going to be a lot easier for you to form that sort of you know connection and friendship so while it is very normal you do have to be aware of the people that are asking for photographs with bad intentions this could involve them selling photographs this could involve them asking for you know explicit photographs and some people are even worried that you know if they know what you look like they are able to i don't know hire someone on the outside to find you or something like that i mean whilst that is a very very extreme possibility it is still you know a risk if they do ever ask you for explicit photos and that's not what you're into have every right to cut communication and like i said before you're able to contact the prison and make sure that that prisoner can no longer contact you after that situation but me personally if this does happen i try to give them the benefit of the doubt let's say i mean if they are very rude and just way too over the top with it i will tell them look i'm no longer interested in talking to you that's the end of it but i've had 
I've had people ask for nude photos, like people have asked like if they could send me red lingerie that I can pose in for them, like very specific things. But um, most of the times I respond to them and tell them, look, I'm not looking for anything sexual or intimate. I want a friendship and that's it. And if they respect that and they are also looking for a friend, they will reply. And usually if you send that kind of a message and they just want a sexual relationship, then they just don't respond to you. Like they'll just not even bother because they're not going to waste their money responding to you to say, thank you so much for explaining that. Goodbye. <laughs> if you do decide to send photos, whether they are normal photos of you and your life or you do decide to send nude photos because we're adults and we're well within our right to do that if we want um but if you do do this regardless of the type of photograph just be aware that most likely other inmates are also going to see your photographs um from what i've been told from michael and experience with other prisoners that i've spoken to in the past a lot of them like to brag about their relationships with people on the outside. 90% of the time, this is very normal. It's just, you know, a conversation piece for them inside. You know, me personally, Michael told me how he would brag about his British friend and his British girl and things like that. And, you know, I have no idea exactly what he says to people or how he talks about me. But I know that I have never sent anything that I would want other people to see. Be aware that a lot of people that are in prison don't have much privacy, you know? Sometimes they'll share a room with, you know, a few different guys. Or sometimes their rooms are open and, you know, people might well walk into their rooms and go through their belongings. So just be aware that whatever you do decide to share with people, photographs, letters, the things that you write in letters, whatever it could be, just keep that in the back of your mind that other people might see it. So if you're sharing things that you aren't comfortable other people knowing, maybe take a second think about that. So another thing, if you live in America and you are writing to someone who also lives in America or that is what you are hoping to do, my advice would be to choose someone that is in prison in another state to you. The reasoning behind this is that if anything were to go wrong and, you know, someone were to send someone to your house, for example, um, again, I don't want to scare you guys, I've never heard of this happening, but it obviously could. Um, you know, most people in prison don't have these type of connections on the outside, but of course some people are going to have access to, you know, bad people and, you know, all that. I heard from a few people that when they choose a prisoner, they try and choose someone in the same state so that they can go and visit them. Um, while I completely understand this, like, I would love to be closer to Michael so that I could have met him already or have more frequent visits with him, but it is also not the best choice safety-wise. So if you were just starting out writing to prisoners and you haven't really had much experience with it yet, then my advice would be just to choose someone that lives far away just in case. Especially if you are providing your actual address to this person, then just, you know, try and put a bit of distance in between you guys. Okay guys, I am done with this video. I really hope this was helpful and informative. I just want to say this is my personal experience writing to prisoners and my opinions on how to be as safe as possible. I'm sure everyone has different opinions and experiences. I just wanted to put as much safety information out there as I can, just so that you guys, you know, are as informed as possible about this. Um, writing to a prisoner can definitely be super rewarding. You can create a great friendship like I have done with Michael, but you do still need to be pretty careful because of the nature of the situation, you know. Not everybody in prison is violent, but there are obviously a lot of people that could turn violent or could have bad intentions for you. So I want you guys to be as cautious as possible and get the most from this experience if you do decide to write to a prisoner and just, you know, be as safe as possible. So yeah, if there's any questions or anything else you want to know about this whole process, how to write to prisoners, what to write, how to choose a prisoner, then comment down below and I will get back to you. I'll see you next time. Bye.